Welcome back to our series Understanding Seabed and uh, we are still continuing with our support materials for assessment and uh, our focus today is uh, part 3 a continuation of uh, performance criteria weighting and uh, we started looking at uh, performance criteria weighting tool and uh, we looked at the one of the factors that we can use to populate that template and that is critical aspects so in our part three is a continuation uh, from where we left in part two and now looking at the elements of uh, performance criteria weighting template to populate uh, our PC weighting tool. But because I wanted to highlight these components, because there are certain things that are not here that I want you to understand, I uh, went further and uh, just develop another word document but this time i want to know the elements critical aspects then element ranking based on the critical aspects uh, weighting and uh, weight by factor and uh, what is the final weight of that element and then we'll use that now to populate our tool so that you're able to understand so again, let me pull uh, my OS. So this unit has uh, six elements. I'll have one, two, six elements. So let's look at element one has how many critical aspects. So this element one, it has one, two, three aspects, critical aspects. So you write three. So you do that for all the elements. So you have now highlighted the number of critical aspects in each performance criteria. So element one has three, element two has two, and like that. So what are we seeing? Maybe I bring this up. We see that element one has three aspects. But again, if you go to element two, three, and four, they share the same critical aspect even one and five, and only since uh, six is unique. So when you're talking about ranking, you're saying that the one with the highest number of uh, critical aspects is given the highest rank. In this case, you use your element. So you look at how many elements do you have with six. So the highest uh, element will give you the highest rank, at which is six. So if you have elements up to 10, so your ranking will be 10. So in my case, it's 6. So the highest rank I'll give is 6. But again, which element I'll rank 6? And you understand each element needs to have its own ranking. So when you're talking about critical aspects, you have mentioned there's a direction that it follows, especially when you find uh, different elements share same number of critical aspects in this case so we are going back and now say element one and five because they share the same critical aspect three we are going back to our os and uh, find out which one addresses uh, products and processes so allow me to go to element one. 
But again, as an expert, you're the one now to say this element deals with uh, processes and products. So in my case, uh, there are no products. These are all processes. I'll go to five. Uh, I'll see if there's a product anywhere. Again, these are processes. So you realize element one and five, because they share the same critical aspects, I've moved to the other factor, and that is products and processes. But I've realized all of them are processes. So they are still sharing a common uh, denominator. So that takes me to another level, and that's creativity. Again, I'll go to aspect number one, uh, sorry, element number one, and see if there's any creativity level that is needed. And majority of our medical course, uh, usually you see they're outlined using standard requirements. Because if you have an SOP, that's what you need to follow so that you're able to give uh, results. So you realize one and five Creativity levels, you can see as the required standards, as laboratory requirements. So again, there is no creativity that is uh, outlined in these pieces. That takes me to another level, and that is uh, number of tasks or number of performance criteria. Because I want to see which one am I going to give the highest rank? Is it element one? or element five. So I'm going to element one. How many PCs does it have? So this is, uh, it has five. And then this one has uh, one, two, three, four. So if I was to use ranks, then this will be given number, the highest rank. So I'll give this six. This will follow to five. If that is understood, let's go back to element two, three, and four because they're sharing again critical aspects. Same procedure. So we move again to our OS and uh, check if there's any that addresses products and processes. So you look again, they share that. Go to three. See, these are aspects of our results. Results to us are usually product of a particular test. So if I was to rank, then element number three will take, again, uh, let's look, we haven't done, let's look at four. Again, these addresses uh, A report is that results, that's what we are talking about. So this is the only element that addresses a product, but the rest are, uh, are processes. So in this case, our element number three will take rank number four. But again, because this one and this one share critical, I mean, uh, they don't have products, they're all processes, then we'll go to number of performance criteria. So let's look at two and four. So element two has how many? One, two, three, four, five, six. And uh, element number four has one, two, three, four. So this will take the highest rank, and that is uh, three, followed by this one, two, and automatically this will take the lowest rank. If that is understood, you have come from critical aspects, and you have seen their sharing, so there's an element that shares, then you have gone further and looked at products, you have looked at processes, you have looked at number of performance criteria, creativity levels, and uh, we have managed now to rank elements based 
on all those factors. So now you have ranked all these elements on their ranking. Element one being ranked at six and element number six being ranked one. So what usually happen, you need to give a total for your ranks. So the total for this one is uh, barely around 21. So maybe I'll say total, total rank. So when you talk about waiting, so we are here. Sidak has given us uh, a formula on how to weight uh, these elements. They're giving us a formula. And the formula is uh, the nth number uh, divided by Total ranking, so is nth rank over the total rank times 100. So in this case, our nth rank, let's just do element one, is rank number six divided by 21 times 100. So if you do that math, so in this case you'll find it is uh, 28.5. So you come here and say, um, so always do you round it off. But again, it's very important. I'll tell you why. When you round off and the closest whole number, because your total here needs to be 100. So let's do the other is three divided by twenty-one times hundred. You get six. So you now done the weight, the weighting, and converted it to 100, and ensure all your totals need to be 100. So let's talk about weight by factor. At what point do you uh, introduce factors? What guides you is one, you check your lowest uh, weight and see if you're able to distribute the weight on the number of elements, I mean, number of performance criteria for these elements. So in case mine is three, I'm able to distribute four marks in uh, three performance criteria. And you're talking about level six, so that is two by two, two for theory and two for practicals. So I'm going to distribute two marks for theory in uh, three performance criteria. So to me, this is unrealistic and therefore I need to introduce a factor. But again, if you can and you feel as a developer can distribute these marks, then there is no need to introduce a factor. So you only introduce a factor when you feel the lowest weight cannot be distributed to the number of uh, performance criteria. For that element so again what determines which factor should i use so that is upon you as a developer to decide on which numbers that you want to use so you can use one you can use 100 20 that depends with you 
bear that in mind the numbers that you uh, the factor that you're going to use you're going to multiply by the total weight to give you the number of uh, assessments that you're going to to do with for that term so the higher the factor say if you do 20 you multiply 20 by 100 you get 2000 therefore how many assessments should you do to achieve the 2000 mark so to for me i'll go for three and three will give me uh, the total weight of uh, 300 marks so i'll be able to distribute uh, these 300 marks in uh, three cards of 100 each so again again i'll repeat this depends with you on which factor that you want to use but again if you feel the lowest weight can be distributed then there is no need to introduce a factor so let's now multiply uh, factor 3 by all this so that the total will be able to be 300 times 3 i'll get 87 So if you add all this, you realize it comes to 300. So what does performance criteria weighting tool? It communicates that you have uh, 300 marks that you need to distribute across different assessment uh, methods. So in this case, within a term, I need to have uh, done assessment that is worth 300. So how does this factor affect your number of assessments? So the highest, the higher the factor, the higher the number of assessments that you're going to conduct within that, within that term. Again, that is upon you as a, as a developer of this tool. So if you say use 10, then I'm going to multiply 10 by 100 and that will give me a thousand. So how many assessments are you going to do to reach the thousand mark? So you can see how this tool now communicates the number of assessments. If you use 8, 20, multiply here by 20, you'll get 2,000. How many assessments do you need to do to achieve the 2,000 marks? So the lower the factor, uh, the better the distribution. So you can see my 300. So within that was I can distribute in three cards. 100 100 and 100 so to me that is achievable within uh, within a term so in our next video we'll be looking at now populating uh, the pc waiting tool using uh, our draft or sketch that you have just made so thank you for your support let's continue to subscribe comment and share the videos so let's meet in our next tutorial thank you